The most common way for people to read their Bible is usually to pick it up, open it to a random page, point to a random verse, trusting that God has guided their fingers only to be disappointed. They find some random genealogy or a law about a food being clean or unclean or some instructions about the proper way to sacrifice an animal. Two or three of those, and most people just give up, wait until Sunday, or they find a podcast where their favorite preacher has something inspiring to say. The other factor that works against us is that most of us wait until we're having a hard time in life to pick up our Bibles. In other words, we wait until we are dehydrated to look for some water. We're desperate. We're thumbing through this mysterious book, looking for just the right piece of inspiration and advice. And we've already found out that that doesn't work. We know now that we need to stay spiritually hydrated. But how do we make sure that happens in our already busy lives? I saw a really good quote the other day. It said, amateurs wait to be inspired. Professionals have a process. In other words, authors don't wait until they are inspired to pick up their pen. They just write every day. Some days their words are trash, but other days their words are moving. Professional athletes don't wait until they feel like working out and practicing. They get up to work out and practice at the same time every day. They make a habit and they keep their habit. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about habits. Because one of the keys to make sure that you stay spiritually fit and spiritually hydrated is to create a habit of regularly spending time with God with your Bible open. Now at this point, you might expect me to say something about how it takes 21 days to form a new habit and that if you will just read your Bible every day for 21 days, then you too will have formed a new life-giving habit. I'm not going to tell you that. Because I have tried to form new habits in 21 days only to break them on day 22. We need something more. Well, almost 10 years ago, Charles Duhigg published a book that has become a bestseller. And in the book, he shared some insights as to how successful people form healthy habits. I want to share two of those insights that I believe will guide you as you form a habit of reading your Bible. The first habit centers around the habit loop. The habit loop consists of three steps. There's the cue, the routine, and the reward. And the idea here is that if we can keep the loop going, then we can create and sustain a new healthy habit. Let's look at the habit loop with the idea of developing the habit of reading our Bible regularly. So the final part of the loop is the reward. And when it comes to reading our Bibles, we've already talked about the rewards. Gaining wisdom, growing in love, knowing that we have heard from God, and more. Step two is the routine. That's the act of picking up your Bible and reading it, the goal of our new desired habit. So, let's talk about step one, the cue. The cue is some kind of a reminder that triggers the routine. And the belief here is that if we have an, an effective cue, then we will engage the routine, reading our Bible, more often. So, what kind of a cue might I or you create that will remind us to read our Bible? Well, I might pick a specific time of the day when I will hydrate. Many people find that it works best for them to spend time with God as the first thing they do when they get out of bed. One of the reasons this works is the connection between giving God, who is the most important being in the universe, the first and best part of our day, instead of fitting Him in sometime later, giving Him leftover time. At the same time, other people, they read their Bibles as the last thing they do before going to bed with the motivation there that they are filling their mind with God before they go to bed so that they fall asleep thinking about God. Your cue might also include a specific place where you meet with God. 
You might even leave your Bible in that place as your reminder, another cue. I heard a story of a man who had a rocking chair in the corner of his room, and that was his place to meet with God. Maybe, if your phone's not full of them already, maybe it's a reminder that notifies you and requires you to check the done box. Of course, we know we can meet with God anywhere and anytime. But it might be for you that creating cues will help you to make and keep the habit. The second insight, which I think is so profound, is the idea of keystone habits. If you have ever seen an arched doorway made out of bricks or stones, you may have noticed the brick or stone at the top of the arch. Sometimes it's shaped more like a square, but with the, sky, the sides cut to a slight angle. That's the keystone. And when the keystone is in place, all of the other stones are held in place to make a curved arch that's strong. I can't explain the geometry or the physics of it all, but when I was at the science museum with my kids, we built a freestanding arch and it didn't stand and stay in place until the keystone was in place. The keystone is one brick, but it holds all the other bricks together. And that's the idea behind a keystone habit. A keystone habit is one habit, but it's not equal to other habits. A keystone habit improves several parts of your life. And I believe that staying spiritually hydrated by reading your Bible three to four times a week is a keystone habit. Yes, it affects your spiritual life by keeping you connected with God throughout the week. And it keeps you hearing from God more often, which motivates you to pray more. But I believe it also affects more than your spiritual life. As you hear from God regularly, you make better decisions more often, and you just feel better. Recently, one of my favorite podcasters interviewed Charles Duhigg, and he shared something really fascinating about keystone habits. He said that keystone habits work because they become a part of your identity. When you form the habit of staying spiritually hydrated through Bible reading, you begin to see yourself as the kind of person who stays spiritually fit. I just can't skip reading my Bible, you start saying to yourself, because then I'll get spiritually dehydrated, and I'm not the kind of person who runs on empty. I stay close to God. I'm a godly person, and I rely on wisdom and energy from God. It's who I am. Now, before you are tempted, to dismiss all of this as just psychology or motivational thinking, let's look again at the example of Jesus. We've already talked about how Jesus regularly withdrew to lonely places. The Bible tells us that after a while, his friends and disciples, they just expected him to get away so that he could spend time with his Father in heaven. In the first chapter of Mark, though, it's still early in Jesus' public ministry. His disciples are not yet familiar with his habits. So one day, the crowds were showing up, and there were plenty of people to heal. Jesus is nowhere to be found, and his disciples, they get nervous, and they form a search party. Look at what we read in Mark chapter 1, verses 36 to 37. Simon and his companions, they went to look for him, Jesus. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you! But Jesus is unhurried. Where was he? And what was he doing? Well, he was not hiding out, avoiding the crowds because he was so worn out. Mark actually let us know already where Jesus was and what he was doing while they were looking for him. Look at verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. I believe that Jesus' time alone with his Father filled him up, hydrated him, so that he had something to give. And as a result, he was overflowing with love and joy for every person who needed something. Even though the previous day was long and full of needy people, Jesus got up early, found his special place, as was his habit 
and spent time with his father, listening to the voice of his father, hanging on every word that came from the mouth of God, his father. Remember how I shared the sad observation of so many people starting out with Jesus and then falling away? Almost every one of them never developed this keystone habit. So the time that you are giving in this course to building this keystone habit, it takes a lot of work now, but you are setting yourself up for a lifetime of spiritual growth. If you hang around our church for very long, you'll hear us talk about living your full potential, which we believe only happens through a relationship with Jesus. And I've seen that as people have developed a habit of staying spiritually hydrated, they take big steps toward living their full potential. Let me share the story of one of our church members. He wrote this, Typically, I would wake up and open my emails and routinely find myself caught up in the stresses of the day. Since starting Hydrate, I have built the habit of waking up, working out, and reading my Bible and praying. Since starting this, my daily stress level has changed dramatically. My day starts with a word from God compared with the past when it started with stress. And his story is not unique. In fact, in our next lesson, I am going to share the results of an eight-year research study of the habits of over 100,000 people that will show you the data behind the benefits of engaging your Bible throughout the week. For now, let's put it into practice. So get your Bible, your highlighter, whatever else you need, find 1 Peter, and today we are going to hydrate in chapter 3, verses 1 through 22. Enjoy your time with God today.